Hey guys, today's the day, the day that's been rumored for so long, and then it happened and escaped like a wet fart. How you doing, Will? I'm good. It's uh, it's it's it happened. We finally got it. What we've all been waiting for: a Nintendo partner direct. <laughs> After months of speculation, the thing waiting for the big end, we got the Nintendo partner direct. The thing Mini. we all definitely knew was going to happen, the mini partner direct. We all knew yeah. it was going to be a mini partner direct, and that's it. We all yeah. knew it. We all said that that was going to happen, and then that's what happened. And we all definitely said it was going to be on the 28th, the Tuesday. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. And, and what a partner direct it was, Will. It wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't like, you know... The, why do I say this? You know, Nintendo is very good with their directs. When they knock it out of the park, they knock it out of the park. Right. Uh, this, this they didn't knock it out of the park, but they, like, got to third base <laughs> really quickly. So that's pretty good. You they know, did, I, wouldn't, they, I wouldn't discount that. You These wouldn't, are baseball metaphors. I'm a dad, so I know everything about baseball. They didn't get a base. They just, no, but, they, they, they I mean, they didn't get a. They didn't score. You know what do they right. call it? In, what do they call it in baseball when they make it to home but they don't do a home run? What do they call it? Just a score, I, a one point. Yeah, no, that it's called. It's called a run. Every every score. A run. A run. They so they didn't run. get yeah. a run, but they almost no, got a run. They almost got a run. They got to third base, which means the next one. You know who had the runs? Run. This guy. Really. A lot of coffee. Because I today. haven't pooped today. <laughs> oh, I pooped at, at today, least today two was, times. Today was quite the day. We went out east to see uh, our aunt and uncle and our cousin, and they kept asking where you were. And I kept having to explain that you are the busiest man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I did today, Will? What I got up do? at yeah. 8 in the morning, oh, snoozed for time. about 30 minutes. I know. Okay. It's, it's Listen, it was not a good day. <laughs> <laughs> uh and then i got ready for the nintendo partner direct mini yeah and then i watched it and i said i woke up for that and then i for some reason decided to make a whole ass video about it and then mm. i took my nihongo no resan and then i fell asleep in my chair and then i ate a pizza and now i'm here there you go and that was Good my day you. today you had you had quite the day I had such a busy, busy, busy man. Uh, while you were out gallivanting about with our aunt and uncle. With our family, who kept anyway. asking about you. Anyway, um, we, we are going to go through the Nintendo Direct one game at a time, every single game. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> Uh, but first, before we do that, we got to say, yo, what up to Thrill House, who gave us a whole year of support. Wow, a whole ass year. Happy anniversary, fellas. I met Thrill House this weekend and hung out with them for two days. Oh, wow. So I appreciate Easy. that whole year of support. He sucked. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, is he just as thrilling? Hey, he was great. Uh, nice. Razzle Very jazzled. Good. Thank you for the 21 months. And Oh, I have. he gave me something to give to you. Which I will forget to do. Okay. But I'll try not to. Uh, Irv, thanks for the 13 months. Favorite food and why is it an everything bagel? I, do I ban them now or later? Uh, later, when they least expect it. Okay, good. Kind of uh, like how you least expect when I'm going to do the will correct all of Bob's mistakes. Uh, 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 what did we talk about on the last one? Uh, it was trivia. <laughs> oh my god, I got so much wrong. Here's the thing. Are you going to correct thing. me on things that I was immediately corrected by? <laughs> you, no, that's the thing. Because <laughs> the problem with do with correcting you on a trivia podcast is that you're almost immediately corrected. Right. So, but right. I found. Uh, what did I find? I found four things that you were wrong. With oh that my! You did not get corrected for. Oh my god! The first thing. <laughs> the first thing was you got the name of this segment wrong. The name of the segment is Will Corrects All of Bob's Mistakes from last week's episode of the Nintendo Podcast. You called it 
what was Bob wrong about on the Nintendo <laughs> podcast? Which, okay. to be fair, Come on. is a better name. It's a better name. So I'm going to start you that from now on. <laughs> you can't. Okay, whatever. What else? Two. Two. You said that Mario Kart 7 was on the DS. It was on the 3DS. I was so corrected Mario about that. You were corrected about that? I was corrected about that, yes. I must have missed that because I was too mad because we had Mario Kart DS. It was right, great. That, it was the best game on the system. Yeah, I confused the two, yes. Uh, you said Pac-Man was a Capcom game. It is not. It is in Namco. I'm did I say that? You on that one. You did. You did. I, did. I didn't put down timestamps because I was too much in a rush. Um, but the big one you got wrong, and this is this we need to talk about, uh, the most expensive Nintendo console at launch. I don't remember what you said, but that, the answer. Okay. The answer is the Wii U Deluxe Edition. The, the most that that's, launched, the, that the, launched at three forty nine. See, see the the problem was the question was stupid because because. Yes. We, we it left out, there were so many different ways that could have been answered right and i know that jackson picked like the supreme wii edition or whatever Wait, which was the queen's wii i think because i googled it and it's just a gold wii well the, yeah the queen's wii is is gold plated so yeah I th but the supreme is wii is also gold so right. i think it's the but same thing when you say the most expensive Nintendo console, you're thinking the most expensive console at retail at launch. Yeah, well, yes, that's what I... The answer to that I, question is right. it was the Wii U, which launched at 349 for the Deluxe Edition. Well, I had two, I had two thoughts going in my brain. Mm -hmm. I was thinking the most expensive one to buy at launch or the most expensive one to manufacture. Right. And, I mean, the, the, the Wii U Deluxe makes a lot of sense. I don't think I even had an answer. I don't think I even said an answer to that. I just didn't know what the question was. Yeah. That was that was a what is Jackson wrong about? <laughs> I yeah. blame I blame him for that one. <laughs> what a fun segment. Thanks for doing the segment, Will. I appreciate no you problem. doing God's this has work been over there. The newly the newly rechristened what was Bob wrong about on the Nintendo podcast? Well, uh, now we have to talk about the Nintendo Direct. What was Nintendo yes, wrong about did. today? Uh, is this in, <laughs> this is in this is in order? Yes, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, so, so the first game that they talked about, they spent most of it in Monster Hunter. Yes, Monster Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak is launching on the Nintendo Switch this week with a brand new trailer oh. showing shown during the Direct Mini. Capcom shared some new details on what to expect. Uh, new monsters, combat, and locales. Plus, there's a master rank difficulty to make things harder. Coming on June 30th. Uh, I like so Monster this Hunter. Is, I don't think this will get me to play it again, though. No, this is um, the latest expansion for Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, so you need Monster Hunter Rise to play it. Uh, I don't have Monster Hunter Rise, so I won't be playing it. So how much is this? Uh, Does it cost Is it money? on the eShop already? Probably. I, I again, I liked what I played in Monster Hunter, but uh, yeah, I'd also imagine you probably have to play a lot of Monster Hunter in order to get to the good stuff in Sunbreak. You know? Yeah, yeah. This is for like people who have completed Monster Hunter at least three times. Probably need to would get the most out of this. It's forty dollars. Okay. Yeah. Somebody oh, in the chat. Full Total Warlock says uh, double game size, like physical oh, wow. size, or or there's more in the game. It's like double in the game. I don't know. Uh, so that's cool. If you're a Monster Hunter fan, you now have double game size to to play around with. Yeah. Uh, anyway, hey, it's made by the same guy who's made Pac Man. <laughs> Funny guy. That Next is, is near near Automata, the end of your. Why edition. are you saying it like that? And why does Wood what? say it like that? Automata. Autom uh, well, so I always thought it was Automata. So did I. But in in the trailer, they pronounce it as Automata. 
Okay, I've never heard it like that before until Woods. I know said that's the it. thing. Like I've always seen it written. I've never heard it spoken. And I've heard both, like when spoken, like near automata and near automata. The trailer says automata, so I'm going with automata. I've also never heard. Uh, we'll get we'll get to it later. There's another. There's okay. there's two other ones that the 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 pronunciation threw me off. But we'll, we'll get to them when we get to them. All right. Near Automata, the end of Yora edition, is coming to Nintendo Switch on October 6th with new costumes and previous release modes and other content. End of Yora edition includes the game and all previously released DLC. So this is a uh, Wii ports of Near Automata, which has been out for a while now. Uh, I've never, I, I know of this game, but I've never actually like seen what it is. And now that I have seen what it is, it doesn't look too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I i mean uh this is the first game right this is the first game the second there's another what? this is the i think this is the first one made by platinum there's okay. another near game i think it was just called near oh and okay. i think it's as far as i know it's very different from this okay okay so this is the the first near automata game so i i looked up the japanese it's nia automata Okay. O automata. So that's why automata. So that makes yeah. I guess that makes sense. Uh, also, I saw this from Wario sixty four. You can get yourself a really nice near automata uh, wallet. Ooh. You can get like a nice bright blue one, or you can get yourself this nice black one for four hundred and sixty nine ninety nine. <laughs> And it's a pre-order. Uh, I want to meet the I want to meet the near fan who would spend close to five hundred dollars on a wallet. Chat anybody? <laughs> anybody want to meet Will <laughs> for the low low price of four hundred and sixty nine dollars? How many of those do you think they made? Because realistically, do you think they four. have like a, that many people going out and buying five hundred dollar wallets based on a obscure ish video game? At least three of them. They made at yeah. least three. Uh, I think that's all I had to say about Nier Automata. This one, mm -hmm. I wanted to know, like, who developed this? Like, is this... this port? Oh, oh it, it says... No, 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 this next game. Oh. Uh, I guess it says it right here in the beginning. Anna, yes. uh, Annapura. Annapura yeah. Interactive. And uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts developer, uh, Simongo... Uh, Lorelei and the Laser Eyes is a modern day take on puzzle adventure games coming to Nintendo Switch first uh, next year. Yo, they they published Florence. Remember Florence? Yes. Uh, Annapurna is like they're a film studio, but they have an incredibly diverse and prolific video game division. Did like, you say so that... many like weird ass indie games are from them? And there's a lot of good stuff, too. Oh yes, Sayonara, Wa Sayonara Wild Hearts. Uh, yes. I th when I saw this, I was like, "This has to be from somebody." Like this can't, like they're not yeah. just taking a random ass indie game. It looks, it, the style is very cool. I like it. Um, yes, uh, I've played Sayonara Wild Hearts. I but I played it on iPhone, and I don't think it's a game for iPhone. I think it's a game mm -hmm. that uh, would benefit greatly from buttons. Okay, is it like quick time uh, events? Kind of, sort of. It looks like it. I'm I'm about to have a yeah. seizure just watching the Sayonara. Wild I mean, Hearts it looks trailer. cool. It's got good music, but like you need like good fast reflexes and buttons are preferable for that. Well, let's talk about the best game of the whole direct. Yeah. Like when I saw this, I'm like, oh, Bob must be so happy right now. I was so stoked. Super Bomberman <laughs> R is getting a sequel with a new mode, Whoa. a castle mode, where a team of up to 15 players fight. Uh, fight for treasure against the solo player attempting to fight them off. That's weird. That what do they call that type of gameplay? Th uh, that's, there's a name for it. There's that one game a asymmetrical. Oh, asymmetrical. Where like uh, one group of people is doing something, but it's like one person is doing something completely different. What like was evolve? the game where like one guy played a big monster and everybody else played like basically the 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 hunters of that big monster. The case the the yeah. the, the monster was black and 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 the the case was all red. That was evolve. 
Yeah, that's the game. Yeah, that was that was the the game from the from Turtle Rock, the Left for Dead people. Right, 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 right. Yeah, a- asymmetrical multiplayer just means like not everybody's doing the same thing. Right. So, uh, so th- th- they had Super Bomberman R online where they did like basically a battle royale version, which was which sounded yeah. cool. I didn't actually play it. Um, I like what they did with Bomberman, like when they added all of the Konami characters. You can play as like, 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 uh, like Venom Snake and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I only played it at launch and I uh, got sick of it very quickly. So <laughs> this looks almost exactly the same, except for that mode. And that's all that they set. All that they give you is there's a new mode. Yeah, I mean. The thing with Bomberman is it's such a simple formula. Like, it's there's really no need to complicate it. You just give us uh, a selection of maps and, like, a multiplayer mode and you just play Bomberman. Mm-hmm. There's not really much more you can do to improve that formula. It's like Tetris almost. Yeah. So I don't know what this game could bring that would, you know, make Bomberman exciting again they- beyond just the basic Bomberman concept. I mean the the idea of the fifteen player uh, 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 multiplayer mode is a good idea. Having the outfits is a great idea. Having all these external factors, there was a single player mode in Super Bomberman R that was a really good idea. But then again, you mm-hmm. know, it's it's kind of just got repetitive. Having different and creative hazards ha- hazards in the levels and stuff. There's plenty mm-hmm. of ways they can put a fresh spin on it. I don't know if they can get away with charging 60 bucks for this because they yeah. didn't get away with charging 60 bucks the first time. <laughs> it was one of the only games on the Switch and it I, I'm I mean I'm shocked they're making a second one cuz I thought right. it did not do well. But I guess it must have done well enough to warrant a second one. Mhm. All right, well, Battle Network, your favorite Mega Man game. <laughs> Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. Ten Mega Man Battle Network games from the Game Boy Advance are coming to Switch in 2023. There are also 1,000 illustrations and 150 songs included Whoa. with the games. 1,000 illustrations. Yes. Uh, I will say I was watching. I watched this direct like throughout the day, and my son was particularly interested in the Bomberman game and um, the Mega Man games for some reason. Oh, very good. Not, I don't know yes. if we're going to start him off on Battle Network, but... No. Well, I don't know if I'm going to start him off on regular Bomberman, because that shit's hard. We'll start him off where we started off, Mega Man 3. Throw him in the trenches. Okay. <laughs> um. Uh. Did you notice anything about the gameplay in this trailer? Like the, like the gameplay footage in this trailer? Uh, f- uh, not initially, because I'm not too familiar with uh, the Battle Network. But then I saw, I think it was either in your reaction video or on Twitter, mm-hmm. uh, they, ch- like they changed the art style to it. Like there's a filter over it. Yeah, so they added some weird—I don't know if you would call it bilinear, but it's—it's—it just—it just mushes up all of the pixels. Yeah, and like I get why they do that because like that's the way I guess it. This is more like the way it was originally intended to be viewed, mm-hmm. but it is way way uglier than just the crisp pixel look. Yeah. Uh. You can you can tell you could tell when you're just looking at the game. So that wasn't that that filter. You could turn it off. Yeah. But but, but that filter, this wasn't in the trailer that was in the Nintendo Direct. This was in uh, Capcom's own trailer. Uh, but it's they they use the filter on all of the footage. <laughs> it looks disgusting. Yeah. Uh, so that that's unfortunate. Uh, but I mean. I was never a big Battle Network guy because I was under the impression that Mega Man is like an action platformer, and then here you are slowing down the action for me. I don't like that. I'd rather th- th- this. This came out around the time when everyone was trying to copy Pokemon. Yes. Uh, speaking of which, uh, games three, four, five, and six uh, are two get are two pack games. You know, they have two different versions. Like three. Uh, there's blue and white and five and four. I forgot what four is called. 
I didn't uh, know they four did is that. Red Sun and Blue Moon, and they're oh all going to be in this collection. So well, that's cool. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't try to like combine them all into one game. Of uh, does like I mean I'm I'm assuming like there's what do you a mean trading combine them all into one game? Thing. Yeah. Well, like because you know how like Pokemon they put some Pokemon in red and some Pokemon in blue, and you got to yeah. trade back and forth. Combining meaning like putting them all together into one game. So like the features of uh, Battle Network Four Red Sun and the features because of Blue because Mo- then it wouldn't just be a ROM. Like this is the Good lowest point. effort that they could do is just is just put mm-hmm. the two ROMs together, you know? Yeah. So they would have to remake a whole freaking game, and they would never do yeah. that. How how dare Good. they put any work into something like this? Good point. Um. So I guess uh, does that mean? So, like, if we buy this collection, which we're not, but if we did, mm-hmm. uh, and we played, like, I played Battle Network uh, 4 Red Sun, and you played Battle Network 4 Blue Moon, uh, does the compatibility, uh, the multiplayer compatibility work the same as it did back in the GBA days? I didn't even know these games had friggin' multiplayer. Why wouldn't they have multiplayer? <laughs> what do you do? Are there? Battle. Can you can you trade uh, Mega Man's? Does uh, does does the Blue Moon uh, have different Mega Man's than the Red Sun? Uh, they're called uh, battle chips. You get li- different battle chips that like give you different moves, and I think you could trade those back and forth. Oh, or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I could just be I, making it up. I have little faith that that's going to work well with the uh, N- Nintendo Switch, uh, the d- 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 you know, internet. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't like if you even if you have the same. Even if you're doing it to yourself, like you play both versions. Can you trade yeah. stuff between yourself? Like I don't. I have little faith that this is going to work well in any of in, in any of that way. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, as uh, uh, as Marcy says, you fight each other, and it's card battle, basically. Okay. Yeah, and I think you could trade chips. Yeah, Marcus is trade chips. It's basically mm-hmm. it sounds it sounded a whole lot like Pokemon. Yeah. Well, I think it's time that we talk about something that's potentially harmful. Okay. Shaving your balls, guys. Yes. For the first time ever, someone's going to shave their balls live on the stream. Yeah. No, we have a sponsor no. today. This is a sponsorship. We are sponsored by Manscaped. Holy hell. Look at that. Holy piss. I was going to start the podcast off by reading this, but I didn't know if that would like void our sponsorship deal or not. No, you can do that. You can do that. Uh, guys listen I mean, we got like ourselves i've been using stuff. manscape for a while but i finally just now got i've been using the 3.0 lawnmower and mm. now apparently there's a 4.0 Look at this. yes what else yes. did they give me oh my god there's so much stuff. stuff what do we got uh they got the hold on the weed whacker the uh ear and nose trimmer which is excellent because as a hairy old man i do get a lot of hair in my nose and my ears oh i got more underwear the, that's good the uh, nose trimmer i have kind of sucks so i'm excited to try this one out Ooh, it's oh it's got power in it already that's nice i took one of these with me this has been my new toiletries bag i took one of these with me on my little trip over the weekend and i assume everybody that was at the convention had one of these also because they're all <laughs> content creators yes what else we got here? Here is the new, the star of the show, the Lawnmower 4.0. Wow. Wow. Here it is. Ooh, it's. Ooh, I got ooh. mine out. And look, look, I'm touching it because I don't care because that's how that's how gentle it is on your on your balls. Yeah. It's, it's actually vibrates like like a lot. Yeah. This is and way I more powerful than has, the other one. I appreciate that it has a little light on there because for your crevasses. Yes. Yeah. Exactly, and it has a nice little. I like this charging station a lot. It is wireless, so you just put it in there, and it's USB C powered, which means the same app plug you charge your switch with can charge this. Uh, I did not know that it was wireless. Well, oh, over here, and we have uh, 
Manscaped Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, anti-chafing. Uh, so when you're done doing your business, you can put this on uh, and feel good about yourself. And Crop Reviver Ball Toner. Wow. Yeah. And... For any... For any time, pick me up. Spritz on your goods once or twice. Let Whoa. air dry. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa now. Uh, the Performance Package 4.0 has arrived and oh man, is it a game changer. Inside this package, you find a lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, nose, hair, hair tri trimmer, crop pres preserver, ball deodorant, crop retriever, uh, reviver, ball toner. We read all those things. Uh, yes. because this trimmer is waterproof, you can say goodbye to the mess on the bathroom floor. I've had a mess on my bathroom floor all week because my shower has been overflowing. Manscaped can't help you with that. It's but what time it can to help you with. It's time to take care of yourself. Go to manscaped.com. Use promo code Wolf. Then spelled like that, and you can get twenty percent off and free shipping. For our audio no. listeners, that is Wolf Den, W U L F F D E N, all one word. You ever cut your balls? I used to use an oh, actual awful. scissor. Me I too. had an actual scissor and I snipped the tip. Yeah, it is really bad. Blood gets everywhere. There's but a lot of this. blood in your balls. Yes, but not with this. And also, something you won't get with this uh, chafing and uh, ingrown hairs. Legitimately. When I use, I also have three point When I use that, comes out great. I'm looking forward to starting to use this because, as we all know, four is better than three. <laughs> I've been uh, just letting it grow until the three because I was like, I don't want to cut my balls again. I'm not using my wall, wall, wall outlet beard trimmer on my balls. I almost used mine, but I'm like, no. <laughs> There must it's be too, a better It's too way. industrial. This one's nice yeah. and gentle. Anyway, exactly. use code Wolf Den, get 20% off at Manscaped. Look yes, at that. and thank you, Manscaped, for sponsoring this podcast. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Lewibix says, BRB, gonna use the bathroom. There's a lot of pee in my balls. Anyway. Uh, I guess while we're talking about sponsors, we might as well thank some people. Uh, yeah. Edward Bova, thanks for the nine months. Spankwise, thanks for the ten months. Spankwise, thanks for gifting a sub. Spankwise, thanks for gifting a sub. Ganthet, thanks for the eleven months. Hello, hello, and Mecha Dragon, two hundred and fifty bits. Hey, Will, I wanted to reread some of the old My Little Pony comics. That have over a hundred issues already. Any advice on trying to read a comic series that long? The uh, if it's still going, just pick up the next issue, uh, the next new issue. Start from there. If you like what you read, <laughs> keep reading it. No, I'm serious. If you like what you're reading, keep reading it, and then try to see if uh, your local comic store, if you're reading them digitally, um, the online retailer, if they have the previous issues. And go back to at least the start of that story arc or the previous story arc. From oh, there, okay. go back and check out any of the trades from the series. Because that'll help everything collect it all in one and it'll make things easier for you. I was going to say to just get a trade. Right. I mean, you could go that route. But for ongoing stuff, if you want to read new stuff, just dive right in. Yo, they make a... Uh... My Little Pony Transformers crossover. Did I ever show you? I got my daughter the the actual My Little Pony, uh, Optimus Prime My Little Pony. It's called mm. My My Pony Prime. My Pony. My Little Prime. Prime. I want you yeah. all to know I am searching all of this in an incognito window. <laughs> uh, there she is. They also make a Ghostbusters one called Plasmane and a, a Pink Ranger one. Oh my god! She has all three. Better appreciate. <laughs> anyway, we should probably talk more about this Nintendo Direct. Uh, On so with the show. Capcom came out with another game. It's called Pac-Man. <laughs> Pac-Man World Repacked, launching on Nintendo Switch August 26th. Uh, Pac-Man World. This was a PlayStation 1 game. Did you ever play yes. it? Yes. No. 
but I this box art is immediately recognizable. Yes. So what was the one for the Genesis that was I think it was like a point and click. Uh that was Pac-Man 2 the New Adventures. Ah. Uh... Yeah. Uh which they just either they just came out or they're coming out with a Pac-Man anthology collection and that game will uh Pac-Man 2 will be featured in that. Interesting. Yeah. So there was never a Pac-Man 1 that was a point and click adventure. No. Well, because in Japan, Pac-Man 2 was known as Hello, Pac-Man. So okay. I guess in America, they decided to make it Pac-Man 2, even though that is not the second Pac-Man game. <laughs> it was the second the... Pac-Man game was Pac-Man, was technically Ms. Pac-Man, but the yeah. second official Pac-Man game was Pac-Man Plus. Okay. Oh yeah, this is the fr- oh look at this sick ass statue though. <laughs> Chrome Noir Pac Man yeah. Chago Kin skin. Oh, you get it in the game. That is sick. I kinda want this just for that. How do I get that? Uh I wanna try this game. Yes. I've heard uh, like according to Wikipedia, it's did get good reviews at the time. I thought it didn't. I mean, I'm surprised it says it got good reviews. So imagine most Pac-Man games that aren't Pac-Man are bad. Maybe that's why. Maybe because yeah. uh, everybody just... Oh, there's multiple of these games? There's yes, a 2 there's for the GameCube three. and a 3. Oh my god, yes. 3 has a 66. <laughs> there's a Game Boy Advance version. Uh... What did uh, uh, Pac-Man Versus came bundled with a Pac-Man game? It got pretty good reviews. Game Skinny gave it an eight, an eight out of ten. Pac-Man Versus came exclu- came bundled with Pac-Man World Two. Okay. All right, that's that's another topic. I, I think yeah. I, w- I think I was thinking of Pac-Man Two when I was thinking of games that were bad. Yes. <laughs> but again, that maybe that was a good game. I just kn- knew I didn't want anything to do with it because it had it was not Pac-Man. Yeah. They they they, uh, they just they just called it Pac-Man 2 so that you would if you liked Pac-Man you would buy it. Yeah. So Pac-Man 2 is not going to be on the upcoming uh Pac-Man Museum Plus. Boo. Yeah. So I guess nobody cares about pac-man 2 maybe it'll end up in the sega genesis games on nintendo switch online maybe there's also a super nintendo version of that game so maybe it'll be on oh super nintendo uh nintendo switch online in my head it's like a sega thing i mean it's just you know it's a 16-bit game it came out on both systems blanc that's the next game. I'm not just from Gearbox Publishing. <laughs> Blanc is a buddy adventure game starring a fawn and a wolf cub. Uh, it's a textless adventure game with puzzles oh. and local and online co-op. It's Maybe a I'll console like it. exclusive on Nintendo Switch. Uh, expected in 2023. Maybe I'll like it because I won't have to read anything. Maybe. Uh, this game looks bad. Yeah, one of them's dying for yeah. sure. One thousand percent. Yeah, this is this is not going to be a this is not going to be a fun time game. I can guarantee. No. Uh, what does look like it's going to be a fun time game though is Return to Monkey Island. It is coming first to Nintendo Switch this year, adding on to the story from the Secret of Monkey Island and Monkey Island Two: LeChuck's Revenge. So this is the new Monkey Island game uh, being developed by uh, series co-creator Ron Gilbert. That got everybody all excited when it was announced earlier this year. Uh, I don't know. I've never played a Monkey Island game, but I know what they look like. This does not look like Monkey Island. No, it does not. This is the most we've seen of it so far, right? I think this is all we've seen of it so far. Like, we knew it was happening. I think we got, like, a title screen tease. Yeah, but, like, this uh, is the artwork for it, and it is incredibly different from yeah. all the other Monkey Island games, even the ones that Telltale made that were that are like now considered unofficial or non-canon, 
Those at least tried to look like the old Monkey Island games. This does not. And I don't oh, know what? if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder what the deal is. I don't know. Well, I'm sure Monkey Island people will be happy. I yeah. am not playing a point and click. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, it's launching first on Nintendo Switch, so that's leading me to believe that it's not going to be as point-and-clicky as maybe it previously was. That's also weird, because this is a yeah. PC game. Yes. Coming out on the Switch first is very bizarre. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next game is another one of my favorite. There's a lot of games here where uh, they're like, they're like uh, this one's not for Bob. <laughs> Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope, the sequel to Kingdom Battle, will be released on October 20th, and it's getting its own showcase on Wednesday at noon. Uh, Pre-orders open Tuesday at the Nintendo uh, eShop. So you can pre-order it now, uh, and there will be a a showcase for it tomorrow. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, This comes out in October. October 20th. Yeah, that date was leaked a while ago. Yeah. Or no, like two days ago, three days ago. Uh, so, I, I will not be getting it. I'm assuming there's going to be a demo. If you put this game side by side with the first game, I would not be able to tell you the difference. Right. The only thing the that looks different is they have the uh, the Lumas. The only thing that really looks different to me is that Mario, instead of uh, pointing his arm cannon at one guy, he can point it at two. Yeah, he has a different a gun sequel, now. So he has two. Yeah. Uh, and these the rabbit enemies are different now. The, uh, yeah, those are those are different types of guys. But I mean, I again, I wouldn't know. I would just think they're different enemies from the first game. Right. This, you know, why though, Will? Because it's Ubisoft. So they just took yes. the first game and hit and hit uh, Control, and control C, C, Control, control P. P. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm yes. not gonna be. I'm not gonna be getting that one. Uh, perhaps you'll be more interested in Little Noah, Scion nope. of Paradise from Psy Games. Uh, it is a 2D strategy game that's out today. Yeah, this is, I think, there's only two games that are out today. And apparently I was wrong in my video. Apparently, uh, we'll get to it later. Apparently there is a demo right. that is out today. Okay. Uh, uh, yo, Will, how much do you love trains? They're all right. Well, you better, you better, you better get your ticket. Yeah, because we're going rail for grade. a ride. Uh, roller coaster tycoon, but with trains coming this fall to Nintendo Switch. Wow. Uh, this is made by Epic Games, uh, and you can tell it's made by Epic Games because this looks like it's Unreal Engine as hell. <laughs> I feel like a train simulator uh there's two types of ways you can go with a game like this you can either make it like a microsoft flight simulator super detailed mm-hmm. super realistic mm-hmm. or you can make it like like they said roller coaster tycoon where it's a bit more cartoony and it's overhead this game just looks like it's trying to split the difference between the two it's doing the overhead like sim style style type game uh but with like super realistic unreal engine graphics yeah ray tracing and whatnot like the yeah. lighting effects look look crazy but there's also like there's a just a million train tracks everywhere and trains going all over the place yeah uh, it looks very uh very bizarre i like how mm-hmm. they put very little effort into the synopsis of this game it's roller to- coaster tycoon but with trains is coming to the fall <laughs> i mean how much Thanks. more can you say about a game with trains <laughs> Yeah, I mean they were right. But roller coaster tycoon, you could like pers- you can like purposely sabotage them. Can you do that? True. Uh, I'm sure you can sabotage this game like your tracks in this game. I'm sure you can. I must have fallen asleep during this one. RPG time. Uh f- yes. On August 18th, uh Desk Worlds The Light of Right will be released on Nintendo Switch. It's already out on Xbox Series X and Windows PC. I'm not entirely sure what this game's deal was. It's not like an RPG maker, but it's like you're in a storybook going through 200 pages of some kid's uh, role-playing game. You know, this looks like uh, that that game made by the... The game that was at the Xbox showcase that's made by the guy who uh, was a designer for Pokemon. Mm Mm-hmm. Start with a Q or something. One of you guys. One of you guys in the chat. Tell me. 
Uh, it looks like that game, except uh, not as good. <laughs> Squire. Something Squire. Yeah. Hubert. Okay, it's not that one. Anyway. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure this is a, a bit more of an indie game. Pen Squire? Yeah. No, you, now you're just saying shit. Qnon? I promise you. Plucky Squire. See, I told you it started <laughs> okay. with a Q. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. We got Sonic Frontiers, and we got more? Footage. Yes, uh, Nintendo gave Sonic fans a sneak peek at Sonic Frontiers open world gameplay and a taste of a new cyberspace levels that look more like traditional 3D Sonic the Hedgehog games. It's expected on Nintendo Switch this holiday. So they purposely chose shots for the trailer where there looks like there's a lot of shit in the environment. Yeah. So I appreciate that. The, the combat looks pretty cool. Uh, yes. and this is the first time we're seeing like a warp to another zone. Yes. And this these is answering warps, our questions. <laughs> it looks like, uh, if you get to go and play more traditional Sonic the Hedgehog levels, one of them is explicitly Green Hill Zone. Right. Um, so I guess this kind of like goes back to, cause they said that open zone was more or less like the overworld map of a traditional platformer like Peach's Castle and Super Mario uh, 64, but with more shit to do. Uh, and this is leading me to believe that like the open zone is that, and then you get to go to uh, other levels, these cyberspace levels, and that's the actual game. Those are yeah. the actual levels. Yeah, the 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 weird Unreal Engine store asset. It looks like the hub world, and yeah. then you take you from there. You go to all of the other uh, zones. I'm but sorry, it's hub not a zone. It's, it's clearly not like a traditional hub world because like there's combat and puzzles, and looks like right. a lot more exploration, um, right. which is cool. Uh, but the game's starting to look a little bit more clearer, and open zone is. Starting to make more sense, but still not enough sense. It's because they basically lied. <laughs> they basically <laughs> said that uh, it wasn't going to be... They basically they, they said it was going to be a unique and different thing, and it's clearly not. And yeah. it, it, it makes a lot more sense now when you just abandon saying uh, the, the uh, open world. It's open worlds or it's open yeah. areas. What would you call Mario Odyssey? Uh, I mean, I mean, it's not open sandbox. world because it's multiple levels. Sandbox, yeah. This is a sandbox game. Yes. You got a big sandbox and you got little sandboxes. Mm -hmm. It's a sandbox game. Anyway, uh, now we got Disney Dreamlight Valley. This is a weird one. I made one. the mistake of watching this in front of my daughter, and as soon as she saw Moana, I'm like, ah, great, now I gotta buy this stupid game. Yeah, Disney do. Dreamlight Valley is a life simulator that combines Disney and Pixar characters in one world. Uh, it enters early access on September 6th, uh, when you'll be able to cook with Ratatouille's Lemmy and fish with Frozen's Olaf. So this is basically Animal Crossing with Disney characters. That's what I got out of it. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's what it looks like. Yeah, you're right. Like you're in this area. You like you build up the town. Uh, you build houses. You go fishing. You explore, and you basically manage the town you're in. But instead of weird far uh, weird animal creatures, it's Ursula the sea witch. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! I just saw a little tiny man Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> like, 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 like. Oh wow! Yeah, he's an actual toy. He's an actual little toy. That's cool. That's crazy. Why is he allowing you to see him? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Because you're in the world with all the other Disney and Pixar characters. Maybe he feels like you're worthy enough to know the secret. Oh. Well, are you going to play Live a uh, Live? A live? This was the other game that you were confused by the pronunciation you of. Betcha. You betcha. Yeah. Betcha. Live Alive makes so much more sense for a title that doesn't make sense. <laughs> 
Uh, a demo for it is out today. Uh, Live Alive will hit Nintendo Switch on July 22nd. If you buy the game after playing the demo, your progress will transfer over. That's always nice. I, I so the, yes, this is the game that has a demo, and I missed this in my uh, in my uh, video because uh, it doesn't tell you it has a demo. In in when you click on the, there's a whole marquee for the the showcase that they had today mm -hmm. on the eShop on the Switch. You click on it, and it it has a list of games that you can pre order or just download. This isn't on there. Yeah, or at least it doesn't tell you that it has a demo. Um. You also miss near. Why is it out today? Is it, or does it have a demo? Well, anyway, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that live live a live live alive. I think that it is a very beautiful game. I actually like this art style. Yeah, I. I uh, think that the English language is very stupid because <laughs> of the different ways you can pronounce live. Yes. Beard Pill says the direct video didn't mention it. The demo. They, yeah, they should have okay. mentioned the demo. That's so weird. Yeah. It, it, we learned that uh, Nintendo uh, is, is, is more prone to putting you in the direct or in an indie mm -hmm. world if you have a demo. Uh but I mean, they were always going to put this on the, in there anyway. Yeah. Oh, my direct video? Oh, not their direct video. You missed talking about uh, it in your video? Oh, no, I didn't miss near... I didn't miss near Automata in my video. I deleted myself talking about it because I thought <laughs> I didn't add anything to the conversation, so I just deleted it. There you go. Uh, this is the other one, Will. Doraemon? How, tell me how that says Doraemon. I thought they said Doraemon. He calls it Doraemon. And then I, 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 I they say it in the game. Yeah, like, I looked up a clip okay. from, the, from the anime in English, and they say Doraemon. That's clearly yeah, I guess, Doraemon. I guess I wasn't paying attention. Doraemon Story of Seasons Friends of the Great Kingdom is coming to Nintendo Switch in uh, 2022. Hold on. Now the chat is is gaslighting me. I got to play it. His dreams by farming, plow the fields, oh, harvest crops, and tend to the animals. Can you hear that? You can even no. use Doraemon's secret gadgets. Doraemon. You just said it. Okay. Anyway, no, I know what it is in Japanese. <laughs> it's not what he said, but but even but even in the anime when they when they have the English dub, they say Doraemon. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what's I don't, I don't know, know what's going on there. But anyway, I I, I'm not fucking playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't play games where we can't pronounce the title. Looks uh, like Animal Crossing play... with Doraemon in it. Yes, which means we might play Minecraft Legends. Uh, will launch on Nintendo Switch in twenty twenty three, uh, as shown and as shown in the new trailer today. Not a chance uh, this, in hell. It, this is an upcoming action strategy game, uh, where they basically let you do they let you build things in this game? You know, the one thing uh, you you do in Minecraft. I'm gonna say yes, but it's not the focus. Yeah. It, it it's it's like uh I mean I heard people comparing it to Warhammer, but it seems okay. like a Dynasty Warriors type uh game. But you have minions yeah. of your own. Anyway, uh, Dragon Quest has a new game all as well now. Uh, Dragon Quest Treasures, the Dragon Quest spinoff, uh, debuted today and is expected to launch on December 9th. So I don't really understand this one. I think it's just you're gathering loot, and that's the game. I think so. Um, it's not a mainline Dragon Quest game. It's a spinoff game. Uh, explores the childhood escapades of siblings Eric and Mia, for who first appeared in Dragon Quest XI, uh, Echoes of an Elusive Age. How many Dragon Quest? How many types of Dragon Quest games do we need? 
Because, because, like, you're starting to blur the line here. You have regular yeah. Dragon Quest, and you have Dragon Quest Builders, and now you have this is the middle. <laughs> yeah, this is like both of them, but like this is like in the middle of both of them. In in my group chat, uh, one of my friends who doesn't play video games that much wanted to play a Pokemon game on a Switch, and he asked like, "Do they have anything similar to you know Red and Blue?" So I said, uh, "Well, they have full on remakes of Red and Blue." Uh, mm -hmm. But then they have Sword and Shield. That's like it plays like Red and Blue, but it's newer. And my other friend in the group chat just started naming all of the spinoffs <laughs> and like the side the side games. Are like, dude, stop, calm down, he calm down. Game Not game. the fucking game. same. Just, just pick between Let's Go and Sword and Shield. Yeah, or wait for a Scarlet and Violet, or just play it in an emulator. That's probably the best best yeah. bet. Yeah. Uh, so but that I say that I say that because the Dragon Quest situation reminds me of that. There's too many different types of the one game. No, I understand that. The, yeah. Well, yeah, there's too many spinoffs. That like, like you want to play this type of game. It's like when we were kids, and we were like, "Hey, we love Pokemon," and then and then your mom gets you uh uh d d mystery dungeon DX, and you're like, "This yeah. is freaking Pokemon! What the hell happened?" Yeah. Or I love Mega Man. This Mega Man game is great. And then you come home with Battle Network and you're like, wait, <laughs> this isn't what I wanted to do. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, whoops. We got to do Portal now. Yes. Portal Companion Collection. Surprise launch today on Nintendo Switch includes uh, Portal, Portal 2, and the co-op mode of Portal 2. Uh, this is good. I'm excited for this. I might actually buy it later. It is cheap. I think it's like 20 yeah. bucks. 20 bucks. That's crazy. Yeah, it's fantastic. These are two excellent games. These are two of the best games of all time and yeah. uh, also one of the best multiplayer games of all time. Yes. Uh, so might be the best multiplayer campaign of all time if I have, if, if I have mm. to, if, if uh, dare I say. Definitely ranks up there. Um, I hope this does well because I hope that then means Valve will consider bringing over half-life to the switch yeah that'd be kind of cool yeah i i, I mean I, for I would, 20 bucks half -life again in a heart for 20 bucks i might want to just just get it yeah but wait hold on because steam yes <laughs> could just do that that's now, my dilemma here i just want to get things on steam now <laughs> right <laughs> Now what? I thought you were gonna. Uh, how much? How much is it on Steam? I don't know. I just I was thought I was thinking like, don't I have it? But I don't because we have Half Life uh, Two. Yes. But... I mean, I know I have Portal One because they gave it away for free mm -hmm. when they put Steam on Mac. Okay. Okay. Here's here's where we run into the problem. Uh, right now there's a special promotion. You can buy. Portal and Portal 2 uh, for $2 each on Steam. Oh my god. Um, How much of a discount is that? Or is it just always $2? 80%. 80 Holy it's usually They're usually 10 bucks each. Alright. I'm going to just do that. <laughs> now, if you want to I mean, play the, the, the multiplayer with somebody else, do they also have to have the game? Uh, probably. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I don't know because I is it is there a local multiplayer on it? I mean, the split screen on console for sure. Yeah. I'll have to look that up. I'm interested so, to see how the multiplayer is going to work on Switch. It will will there be? I mean, there's got to be online like between two two switches. Yeah. Anyway. What are you looking uh, at? Sorry. Uh, if I can go back to it, but not important. Uh, Harvest Stella was the next game. Square Enix's Harvest Stella is about fighting, farming, and forging friendships across four seasons before descending into a mysterious fifth season. The one of death. Uh, the life simulation role-playing game is expected to be out on November 4th. So this had me thinking. I had a bit in my video that I deleted about this game, too. Um, uh -huh. 
this is another one of those like Animal Crossing Stardew Valley type games, but mm -hmm. there's like some action stuff in it too. Like 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 you you by day you're farming and stuff, and by night you're fighting off mm -hmm. monsters and stuff in like a Final Fantasy type situation. Uh, and I'm yeah. like, that's kind of cool because like you have the crafting and then and, and the building and then you have the 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 action and so so it's like the building is 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 worth it, it's like the action is worth the building and the building's worth the action that i play off each other that's cool that's a cool idea but uh cult of the lamb is is doing that it's an indie game right. it's doing that and it it interests me a lot more because it looks like it's a lot more of the action and a lot less of the cultivating stuff uh right but this is good if you're into weeb stuff <laughs> and less into, I don't know, uh, the, the modern American animation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am not into weeb stuff. I am into Portal. Uh, what I was looking up was uh, <laughs> Portal 2 co-op is, is local split screen and online multiplayer on Switch. Oh, that's very good. That is good. Uh, side note. The game mm -hmm. is $20 on Switch. Right now, on Steam, you can buy the Valve Complete Pack for $13.14. That gets you uh, both Half-Lifes, all the expansion packs, both Left 4 Deads, both Portals, all the different types of Counter-Strikes. Uh, Holy hell. A of Defeat, Half-Life Deathmatch Classic, both Team Fortresses. Um... And Dota 2. Whoa. So, yeah. I mean, $2 for Portal is kind of sick, though. It is. It is. All but I really I mean, care about is Counter-Strike out of all of those other games you just listed off. I mean, there are some people in here who only have the Switch, and if you only have a Switch, get your ass Portal. Even for 20 bucks, it's worth it. I want to go out of order for a second. I want to talk about Captain okay. Velvet Meteor: The Jump Plus Dimensions. I don't know yes. why they didn't. I don't. They. I don't know why they put this at the end. I don't know either. They also didn't mention um, No Man's Sky in this article, and that's they showed off that on Switch and a Plague's Tale. Yes, and a Plague's Tale. That's the cloud uh, version. Cloud version. Yeah. Which looks good. I'm not, I'm gonna say I'm interested in that game. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this game, uh, I'm not into the animation, but until they start fighting, and then it looks kind of like it reminds me of Transistor, but it looks like yes. it might be term. Yeah, it's term. It's like XCOM style. Like I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Captain Velvet Meteor, the Jump Plus Dimensions, is described as a tactical action game with uh, about a boy who's moved to Japan. It's coming July 28th on a Nintendo Switch. Okay. All right. And then, finally, we got Persona. This was, like, the big one more thing. Uh, Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4 Golden, and the big one, Persona, Persona 5 Royale, are all coming to Switch. Uh, Persona 5 is coming October 21st. And four and three are coming soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so so this, this is it. This is what you all wanted, right? <laughs> how much we talking here? Uh, let me see. If oh, it's, it's, it's not coming out till October. Yes. First of all. But is it up on the eShop yet? Maybe you can... Uh, here, Persona I, I 5 Strikers Digital Deluxe Edition. Persona 5 to enter my Royale. Strikers is a different uh, game. Oh, right, 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 right. right, right Sorry. Right, right, right. Again, different. too many different versions of the... Because <laughs> I want to know, because it's on Steam. And it's yes. also on Game Pass now. Yes. And it's on... It's been on... PlayStation Forever. Yeah. So, I mean, so I, that's the thing is I pay for Game Pass and I should just play, like I do want to play this game one day. Mm -hmm. I have Game Pass, so I have it. But I kind of want it portably. Yeah. Even though I'll probably never play it portably. 
I searched for Persona 5 on the Nintendo's website, and it uh, returned as a search result uh, refurbished Wii AV cables and five um, Nintendo 3DS uh, game packs. Game cases. What do you... What? Okay. <laughs> Not sure why that shows up when you search for Persona 5 on Nintendo's website, but here we are. This is a game I've always wanted to, to give a try to, but I just don't. Now I have too many options and like and like an existential crisis. Really what I... Sh I mean, I want yeah. it portably so i kind of just want to buy it on steam so i could play it on the steam deck but mm -hmm. uh i have it on game pass and i probably will never play it now can i transfer saves between xbox and steam probably not no no <laughs> that would be sick though yeah well you're about as many frames per second as Mo morbius on the on the game boy color you got you got to leave and come back i Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Steam and Xbox is separate saves. I know, but I don't want it to be. Games like that should should have should have like a like a like their own cloud save through through Sega or something. Hello. Hey, Will. Welcome back. Miss me. Anyway, that was the whole ass direct. Uh, it. <laughs> Will, what were your favorite games from that? Uh, what were my favorite games from this? I mean, I feel bad saying Portal because, like, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> Portal. Um, I, I'm legitimately interested in a play. Game. I think I want to give those games a shot. Uh, what else? Super Bomberman R, of course. Uh, <laughs> Lorelei and the laser eyes looks cool. Um, like I said, near Automata, I finally know what the type of game that is, and it looks interesting. Uh, yeah, like I said, it wasn't. It, they did not get out of the park, but they had some good showings here, and even games I'm like not a hundred percent interested in, like Monkey Island, uh, like uh, Rail Grade, uh, like Blanc, like. They had a good showing, and I would, you know, check them out. I'll say I'm interested in almost none of these. I'm interested in Persona, but not on the Switch. <laughs> right. Uh, Super Bomberman R2. I, I, I'm a little interested, but they showed nothing of the game. They just all they showed was that there's a mode, and they showed some animations that looked like the first game. Uh, I mean. I, again, it's Bomberman. How much more can you do with that concept? They, they, they showed us a lot of games that are ports. Yeah. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, we knew we were getting. That's right. not a that's not a big deal. Uh, Monkey Island, this is the first time we're seeing anything for the new Monkey Island, so that's kind of a yeah. big deal. And again, uh, it's coming first to Switch. A date for Mario plus Rabbids. We got some more information on Sonic Frontiers. I was interested in Sonic Frontiers, so I guess that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, this seems like something that was supposed to be subsidized with first party stuff because there's a lot yeah. of just bland stuff here. Anyway, what is the chat think? Pac Man World hype for me? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in the, in the notifications here, we got H3 Catacomb. Thank you for the prime. We got A Rod Dragon. Thank you for the 11 months. Hey guys, what's your most anticipated game? I don't know. What else? What's freaking coming out this year? I feel like there's nothing anymore. There, with the year started uh, with all this shit coming out, and now I feel like there's nothing. What did I? I just remembered that like Roller Drome is coming out real oh, yeah. soon. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That'll guy. be on PlayStation and Steam. So uh, August sixteenth, that's when it's coming out. That shit looks uh, good. The the roller drone Twitter was like liking my tweets, so we're oh. friends now. <laughs> oh my god! So um, yeah, that game looks awesome. I'm excited for that. But that's again not coming to Switch, and it's coming in August. But that looks fun. Um, I'm gonna have to buy a next do something in order to play Gotham Knights and Resident Evil Four. Uh, 
They showed off gameplay, a new uh, trailer for Gotham Knights, like Robin gameplay. And like they showed off, they showed it off in like an earlier look at the game where he can teleport using the Justice League satellite. And okay. the more I see of that game, it's like, it's definitely the the NBA jam to <laughs> Arkham's uh, NBA 2K. Okay. You know, if, if Arkham was a Batman sim, Gotham Knights is a Batman arcade game. I, I, I understand. Sense. I understand that. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Monkey, thank you for the nine months. King Snarl, thank you for the 13 months. And Woogie Waters, thank you for the two months. Uh, we got to talk about the big news that happened last week. This is some big yes. news. This was this was yes. uh, the 30 years in the making news. This was mind-blowing news 100%. to just drop on a, what, Wednesday? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it, I woke up to just pandemonium. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the Michael Jackson Sonic Urban Legend finally gets put to rest. Mm-hmm. But then walked back a little bit. But I, I think I think he just got in trouble. We'll 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 talk yeah. about it. Uh, Sonic Origins, a compilation of four classic Sonic the Hedgehog games, is out, giving Sega fans a chance to revisit the mascot's 16-bit era. It's an authentic experience, with one exception. Well, with two, but more on that later. Uh, some of the music in many of Sonic 3 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles' players experienced on the Sega Genesis back in the 90s isn't included in the new collection. Instead, Sega swapped in different tracks that are a combination of old and new work. That's because some of the Sonic 3 songs, uh, as originally released, were composed by the late singer Michael Jackson and keyboardist Brad Buxer. According to Buxer, Jackson was not happy with Sega's implementation of the songs and later released Sonic the Hedgehog 3, and later releases of Sonic the Hedgehog 3 included a different set of music tracks. Sega itself has never officially confirmed details about Jackson's involvement in the Sega game. He's not officially credited in any version of the game, uh, leading to speculation that Sonic 3's music rights were fraught. On Thursday, former Sonic team lead Yuji Naka, who was the lead programmer on Sonic 3, outright confirmed on Twitter that Jackson contributed music to the game. It's a long bit, it's a it's been a long-standing rumor and hinted at in the past by other former Sega developers. But Naka would be the per- would be in a position to know. Yuji Naka tweets: "The Sonic Origin Sonic Three have different song. Oh my God! The music in Sonic Three has changed, even though Sega officially uses Michael Jackson's music." Uh, that's the, that's the big 3- that's the yeah. big the big drop. He just this has yeah. been speculated for years. There's been there's all these freaking uh, uh, early YouTube videos of people comparing the Sonic Three music to Michael Jackson's actual music and yes. like being like this is his writing style this is what he does and Yuji Naka just straight up in a tweet goes the music for Sonic Three has changed even though Sega official official uses Michael Jackson's music yes. <laughs> Uh, re-releases of Sonic 3 on other platforms and in other compilations have swapped the music tracks from a prototype version of the game. But for Sonic Origins, Sega went a step further, recruiting longtime Sonic composer Jun Tsunome uh, to modify Sonic 3's original prototype music for the collection, according to Sonic Social Media Manager Katie uh, Kranzowski. Uh, so yeah, and then she goes on to explain how he did it. He actually used... Um, the sound chip from the original Sega Genesis to redo all the music for it, Mm -hmm. uh, which is cool. Um, It's certainly a creative solution to an issue that has vexed Sega and Sonic fans for decades and likely the most authentic way to address uh, what has been something of an urban legend. But that doesn't mean that Sonic the Hedgehog fans are happy with it. Response to the updated prototype music has been wildly negative. It is, (laughs) to say the least, not good. Yeah, it's pretty bad. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you can't, even come close to the original anything they would have done would have been bad yeah um i guess like to use the prototype music would be the next best thing but for some reason the redone prototype music sounds worse (laughs) than the actual prototype music so so what they leave out in in all of these articles is that yuji naka like tried to walk it back a little bit but it, yeah. this doesn't really walk it back that much, I guess. He said, Sega official uses Michael Jackson's music. This is what it means. And then he, uh, it's a quote tweet to uh, a TikTok. 
where Sega's official TikTok is playing a Michael Jackson song. I'm not gonna. Yes. I'm not gonna link it, but I. Uh, is, is it Billy Jean? I don't remember. It's it's it, 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 there's no uh, vocals, but it's just it's just a Michael Jackson rhythm. Yeah. But like, what does it matter? He's still implying that uh, Sonic 3's music changed because they used Michael Jackson's music, even though Sega official on their TikTok is using Michael Jackson's music. That's right. what he means by that. So he's not really walking it back. Yeah, I feel like I'm being misunderstood a lot, probably because I don't speak English and I'm using a translation tool. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think you're being misunderstood. I think you no, just... No, we uh, heard you. We heard you. You're you said what you wanted ass. to say. You tried to cover yeah. your ass. Yeah. <laughs> but he also tweeted a picture of him uh, uh, flying over uh, Neverland Ranch. Yeah. Here, I mean, it, here it is. It, it's, it's never been a secret that Michael Jackson worked on music for Sonic 3. Uh, the question has always been whether or not Michael Jackson's music remained in the game after he left production. Uh, right. Sega has always been coy about it. Um, Brad Buxer, who is Michael Jackson's keyboardist and has a writing credit in Son on Sonic 3, he's listed in the credits of Sonic 3, has said... Michael left because he didn't like the way the Genesis uh, sound chip made his music sound. If it's still in the game, it's probably, you know, a holdover or whatever. Um, yeah, this is the first time anybody from Sega has come close to say, yeah, no, that's Michael Jackson's music in the game. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. It, 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 there's a whole bunch of reasons every every yeah. time somebody mentions something about every time somebody involved mentions something about the music of sonic 3 it's going to be newsworthy because we know very little about it uh we yeah. we only have uh speculation to to, to go off of mm -hmm. it could be a thing where he wrote the music and it was too late in the game to remove it but he just didn't want his name on it so he was like you guys can yeah. use it just don't use my name but then that that's a whole legal issue later for for yeah. the estate and whatnot, they could try to fight to 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 get money for it. So it could be a million different different things, but but it's we're all pretty sure that there is some sort of rights issue involving Michael Jackson, and that is why uh, we never get Sonic Three with the correct music anymore. Yeah, uh, the three zones in question are Carnival Night Zone, Ice Cap Zone, and Launch Base Zone. Uh, in particular, Ice Cap Zone, this is a little bit more well known. Uh, Ice Cap Zone is not based on a Michael Jackson song. It is actually based on a Brad Buxer song mm -hmm. uh, from his old 80s band, The Jetsons. Uh, it's a song called Hard Times. It is the same goddamn song. <laughs> just what, about, what about the end credits? Uh, that is Michael Jackson's Stranger in Moscow. Right, that's what I'm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's another song well, in question. So for this game, they use the Sonic Three and Knuckles end credits song, which if you play, if you you know, you combine Sonic Three and Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic and Knuckles will erase a lot of Sonic 3's music and replace it with its own music. Oh, I didn't even know that. You never noticed that, like, uh, in Sonic Three, when you when you meet Knuckles, it's got like that hip hop drum beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you combine it with Sonic and Knuckles, it's a different song. I don't think I ever noticed that, but it doesn't yeah. change the the the, the zone music though, right? It like, doesn't change. It like doesn't Carnival change Night's Carnival Night. Still Carnival Night. Yeah, it doesn't change Carnival Night, Ice Cap, or Launch Base Zone. It just changes uh, Knuckles' theme, the mini the the mini boss theme, and uh, I think the the invincibility theme. See, that made sense. Uh, now the invincibility I mean doesn't that doesn't make sense, but. Knuckles' theme and the mini boss theme made sense because uh, wait. Yeah, because because story things change too when you combine the two cartridges, right? So and and that's around where the story shit happens. Yeah, um, so uh, that kind of made will, sense to me. The invincibility theme in Sonic and Knuckles is better than the invincibility theme in Sonic. Just saying. Oh, I can't even think of what it sounds like. <laughs> um, you know it if you heard it. And th that's all the stuff that changed with Sonic Origins. They changed the music with 
well, they they changed a bunch of this music for Sonic Origins because they couldn't uh, yes. get the for whatever happened. There's there's no official answer, but uh, they couldn't get the rights to the to the music probably, so they changed yes. a bunch of stuff for so- for Sonic Origins. Yes. Uh, and that's not the only thing that made the game uh, that made the developers upset about the release of nope. Sonic Origins. Sonic Origins contributor shares frustrations over the state of the game. Uh, to help, so Sonic Origins launched, and the most noteworthy part of it was Sonic 3 and Knuckles being ported to HD for the first time. To help make this version possible, Headcanon, one of the developers behind Sonic Mania, worked together with Sega to recreate the classic interlocking duo in the retro engine. Now that the collection is out, Stealth, the alias of Headcanon's Simon Tomley, uh, has acknowledged some of the problems with the final release and shared some of the complications uh, behind them on Twitter. The full thread, which is quite long and well worth reading in its entirety, um, details how Stealth and the team submitted a build that they acknowledged needed some fixes, but Stealth also noted bugs in the final build that were not present in Headcanon's build. The result of Sega's integration of the team's work into the overall Origins game. And uh, Stealth tweets, This is frustrating. I won't lie and say that there weren't issues in what we gave to Sega, but what is in Origins is also not what we turned in. Uh, Integration introduced some wild bugs that conventional logic would would have one believe were our responsibility, and a lot of them aren't. Regarding Origins, we were outsiders, creating a separate project that was then wrangled into something entirely different. We knew going in that there would be a major time crunch, and we worked ourselves into the ground to meet it just so that this would even be made and released. Again, I can take responsibility for my and my team's mistakes, and there were some, some actual mistakes, some overlooking, uh, some, some rush jobs, some stuff we noticed but weren't allowed to correct near the end. It's absolutely not perfect, and some of us, and some of it is from us. It's complicated. I'm extremely proud of my team for their performance under such pressure, but every one of every one of us is unhappy about the state of Origins and even the Sonic 3 component. We weren't too thrilled about its uh, pre-submission state either, but a lot was our control. Uh, Stealth also states that the team wants these problems to be addressed and asked to do major fixes before Origin shipped uh, and inquired about possibly delaying the game uh, and was told that it wasn't possible, uh, which with the game locked uh, for launch on Sonic's birthday is certainly understandable from a marketing perspective. Headcanon is currently waiting to hear back from Sega on whether it can implement some post-release patches. Uh, That's very upsetting. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so, so it's also crazy that he spoke out like this. This person yeah. spoke 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 out like this. Uh because yeah. I mean, no it's not good for a developer to uh straight up just shit on the game as it's releasing. <laughs> yeah. Uh so I recently just saw a little bit of Digital Foundry's video. They posted a video breaking down uh the uh the, the the technical achievements of the Sonic Origins collection. Yes. And it seems like a, a hot pile of garbage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like actually incredibly disappointed. I was excited for this. I thought it was going to yeah. be a huge deal and Me stuff. Too. And now I'm looking at it and it looks like I didn't realize they were rebuilding all of the fucking games. They were rebuilding them in uh, Christian Whitehead's retro engine. That's the right. that's the engine he made. Uh, he remade Sonic CD, uh, Sonic One and Two for the iPhone on, uh, and I believe that's what they built Sonic Mania in. So it, it would make sense for Sonic Three and Knuckles to be done in that engine as well. I guess they had to build Sonic Three in that engine. They had like a really short amount of time to do it, and then Sega just haphazardly put them all together in one collection. Mm-hmm. and hope for the best and this is apparently the best yeah it's i've seen footage of it on twitter it's not great um assets disappear sound doesn't happen when it's supposed to happen uh f- there's like slowdown and glitches when there are- aren't supposed to be it, it sucks because these are 20 year old games 30 year old games it, sh- it should not be that difficult to put them on a modern system at this point 
Yeah, I, I think you'd be better off with the ROMs. The only difference is yeah. the widescreen. We need some widescreen. Yeah. That might be the only reason why the that, that engine needed to exist in the first place. Yeah. Um, another problem is the upscaling. Uh, I, I saw in the Digital Foundry video, they showed that it's it they, they used some sort of weird bilinear scaling instead of the mm-hmm. uh, the, the crisp pixel look. In, in, instead of uh, just just enlarging the pixels, they yeah. tried to like sm- they didn't smooth it out in the same way that they did with uh, Mega Man uh, Battle Network, but it just looks blurry. It just looks it looks bad. It looks like in Photoshop when you fuck up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's very upsetting. And then also the Switch version, uh, some of the cutscenes are are scaled weird, mm-hmm. but some of them aren't it's 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 really it's it's really very bizarre to the point where i'd rather just play them in an emulator like i thought i i thought this would be like a great way to play these games to be able to play them in widescreen and stuff but it seems like that's not the case and that's very upsetting it's very upsetting uh i mean christian whitehead who created the retro engine did not work on sonic origins and i feel like maybe he should have because it's his engine. Yeah. And he would know it better than anyone. Hopefully he's working on another Sonic game. And that's why. Uh, I believe, according to his Wikipedia, he's working on Freedom Planet 2. Oh, that's good. Which was a fan. It was originally a Sonic fan game that turned into a, its own game. Honestly, so just as nice. good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... Let's read some notifications here. We got Cheeky yeah. Boy with the Prime subscription. We got J Buggy with 55 months. 55 months and I catch a Wolf Den Live podcast. How you doing, J Buggy? Thanks for being here. How you doing, buddy? And Scott the Sloth with 100 bits. Uh, with 400 bits. Yuji Naka is like the drunk uncle over there at Sega or his tweets are just translated very badly. <laughs> uh, we have more Sega news. Yes. Sega announces a USB cyber stick. Whoa. Yes. For the Mega Drive Mini. <laughs> yeah. Earlier today, Sega announced the next 11 games coming to the company's Whoa. next mini console, the Mega Drive Mini 2. Uh, but that's not the only thing that they revealed. Uh, and a bit of Sega unveiled a new USB controller based on the classic Sharp Cyber Stick uh, that will be compatible with the tiny console. The controller was known for having both digital and analog joystick modules. And it was compatible with the with multiple systems, including the X68000, the PC98 series, and the PC Engine, if you had the uh, MyComSoft uh, XHE-3 adapter. Uh, Games SX uh, has some details and photos on the original console, along with a fully scanned manual, but you'll need to brush up on your Japanese skills to read it. You can check it out uh, at the link below. The USB controller will launch the same day as the Mega Drive Mini 2 on October 27th. The console and controller haven't been confirmed for a Western release as of yet, uh, but we'll let you know if they are. There's no guarantee that you'll be getting the Cyber Stick either. So I think because... The Mega Drive Mini 2 is coming with like Afterburner 2 and games that originally used the, the Cyber Stick back in the day. They figured, why not just make it for uh, this version? That's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. That's fun. It's ridiculous because it's like four times as big as the console itself. Yeah. <laughs> and and like you use that game for Afterburner? Have you played Afterburner? You don't need all that. <laughs> You don't need it, but I'm sure it makes it a whole lot more fun to play. I don't know. It's it's really not much to the game. Like I don't know. You don't need yeah. all these levers and shit. <laughs> anyway, uh, so so yeah, I don't think we're getting that in America. We didn't get the the Game Gear at all. The, no. the mini Game Gear. I don't see us getting any of this I mean, stuff. I, I hope I hope we get the Mega Drive Mini Two at least. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. They. They haven't sent anything. They usually announce at the same time they announce the Japanese release. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see it happening at all for us. I don't know. That's a shame. That that is an actual shame. 
Uh, now we can talk about Halo Master Chief Collection could add microtransactions soon. Yay! Just what we always want. When I heard uh, when I heard you talk about the Master Chief Collection, I was like, you know what, this collection is missing. I need to give it more money. I want to give it more money, and I can't. Eight years after the game launched. <laughs> the 343 Industries has revealed that it's currently exploring adding microtransactions to the game, allowing players cool. to purchase Spartan points, currently called season points, to unlock gear and customizations they may have missed. For players who are new to the Master Chief Collection or who may not have dedicated much time specifically to unlocking items during the seasonal updates or are simply completionists looking to catch the last outstanding items they need, we are in- we are internally exploring the potential new feature uh, for the future in the form of purchasable purchasable Spartan points. Uh, currently, items are unlocked uh, with season points, and 343 states that it is still happy for players to unlock items through, uh, through play in the same way. We are happy with the current system of how players earn Spartan points by completing challenges and leveling up through play. Um, this would be an optional additive alternative for players who might find the vast scope of the content to be an intimidating amount of playtime and want to get ahead on or skip the grind, uh, or maybe want to grab specific items they want, we all have our favorites. The option to purchase Spartan points, then, is an added extra. You don't have to do it. However, the thinking is that it will allow new players to catch up or older players uh, to grab specific items they want without having to grind for them. We want to inform you of this exploration in advance uh, and provide assurance that purchasable Spartan points will be an additive feature. We will have more information to share about this in the future. It is currently unclear if or when these new Spartan points will become available, but the Halo Master Chief Collection community is already uneasy about the thought of microtransactions entering the game. As long as it's for cosmetics, I don't care. But 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 the problem is it's you're buying cosmetics that people originally grinded for. That and it looks like you might also like get other perks and stuff with the microtransactions. Mm-hmm. So it's odd that they would choose to do it now, eight years after the game's release. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I know like it fi- it's finally on Steam, and it, it opened up the Master Chief Collection to a whole new audience on Steam. Yeah, so, I, I, I'd say th- th- this is a collection of old games that still had that still retains a huge player base. So keeping it alive with microtransactions, I don't think is the worst thing in the world. I don't think it's that bad. Right. I think the problem would be uh, uh, having people pay for items that you previously had to earn, like like to grind because it used to be a status thing and now you could just buy it that's kind of sucks yeah make it so you can purchase future cosmetics that that Maybe, i yeah. feel like would be fine That'd some be of cool. these cosmetics i mean in this picture they look pretty sick yeah like i like yeah. if i'm picking up like halo if i'm picking up this game like my friends want to play it mm-hmm. and i'm picking it up and i see a really cool skin i would like to just buy it you know, just yeah. to play as that. You know, just no, five I get bucks. It. Whatever. I, I would totally pay to just unlock everybody in Smash Brothers. Like I, I still haven't <laughs> unlocked everybody. I just don't feel like going through the grind. Okay. Um, so I understand it. I guess it's just weird to me that we're eight years in. Uh, the game's already been successful. I don't think it's gonna make that much more money. You've probably done as much as you can with the game. I feel like adding microtransactions this late in the game is an odd choice. Like I'm, I know the game is still popular, but how popular is it to think adding microtransactions would, it would benefit it in any way? Well, well the benefit is that they can, they can have some revenue to keep the game, to, to keep adding stuff to the game, to keep the game going. Right, Otherwise they're going to close the servers because, because, yeah. because they have a big player base, but everybody already bought the game. They need yeah. to have some revenue going, you know? So like I understand where it's coming from, uh, they just it's just a very dangerous territory. They have to do it in, yeah. a, in a I don't want to say ethical way because it's really not that serious, but yeah, they have to do it in a way that isn't predatory. Yeah, and that's fair to the people who who have been playing the game and earned all the stuff right. that they got. Right, right. Anyway, 
uh, that's our that's our microtransaction uh, segment of the podcast. Yes. Dice has no plans to make non battlefield games. <laughs> All right, uh, cool, dude. The developer known for his first person shooters with Battlefield 2042 being its current flagship, but Dice's vice president, Rebecca uh, Kautaz, I think I got that right, tells GameIndustry.biz that any projects not related to Battlefield are totally on the back burner. We are only focusing on Battlefield 2042, uh, she said. Uh, there is no time for anything else, and this is what we want to do. In three years, we want to be the first-person shooter powerhouse that DICE deserves to be, and that is what we are going for. Although DICE is best known for Battlefield games, uh, that doesn't mean we won't see another Mirror's Edge or the like at least any time soon. Sorry. Uh, although DICE is best known for its Battlefield games, that does mean we won't see another Mirror's Edge or the like anytime soon. I want the team to be really proud about Battlefield 2042. Uh, that is what they are chasing, and they have their heart and their passion there. We want to be a really proud. But we want to be really, really proud of Dice. We want Dice to be the number one spot for first-person shooter games in Europe, and one of the powerhouses in the world. It's a fabulous team. We're going to make magic together. Since Dice's acquisition by EA in uh, 2006, the studio has worked almost exclusively on FPS titles, including Battlefield. Medal of Honor and Star Wars Battlefront, and Battlefield and they've 20- and they've suffered the same problem that we've had in all of these big AAA studios when they have yes. one developer working on a bunch of different games. They all the big major AAA games. They end up making the same fucking game <laughs> over and over and over again. Friggin' and uh, the, the, the Star Wars Battlefront is Battlefield is Medal of yeah. Honor. It's all the same. Mm-hmm. They made they copy and pasted all of them. I remember yeah. playing Battlefront for the first time, the 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 new one, and I was like, "This is exactly Battlefield, but the guns sound different." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Miss Clicks here. Thanks for the subscription. Hey, hey, girl. She says she says piss. Uh, th- that's your catchphrase. That's my that's my catchphrase. <laughs> do the thing. Do the phrase. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I got a lot this weekend? People were making me do uh, 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 a moist critical impression. Really? I didn't, I didn't appreciate that. Have I ever heard you do that? Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Woo. Oh. I've never done it until this weekend. I, right. I, I, it's not a thing I do. I know. That's why I asked if I ever heard you do that. <laughs> no. Nobody has. <laughs> Somebody, some, this is a, somebody at, we did an impromptu Nintendo podcast panel and yes. somebody waited on the whole line to ask us a question and they got to the front, they were dressed as Ellie and they said, uh-huh. hi, I don't know who either of you people are. I just wanted to say that you look like moist critical. And then she walked away <laughs> and that was it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I'm not. Yeah, okay. So, uh just like every other AAA studio, they're taking all their 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 big studios and they're making them work on only the biggest franchises and that's it. Yes. Uh and it should especially be noted that the last few Battlefield games uh have been bad. Uh <laughs> Battlefield 2042 in particular fell short of expectations and the company has been left on the back foot since. After a disappointing launch, the studio recently removed 128-player breakthrough, removing the once-champion feature in favor of a 64-player version. They also ended support for Hazard Zone just days later and are no longer developing content for this game mode. That's... So, they have... Yeah. They they they, have dice. Damn it. Go. Just go. (laughs) The game was broken as all hell when it came out. And yeah. it got a lot of shit, and they need to they, they need to fix it. But but I don't think that they're gonna save it. I don't think anybody wants to play this game anymore. I yeah. mean, they did it with Rainbow Six. They they that Rainbow Six Siege came out, and it really wasn't good. And then they fixed it, and then people started playing it again. I don't see Battlefield 2042 being uh you know that competitive shooter that everybody goes back to after they fix things. Yeah, especially because knowing the way EA works is just going to wait till the next Battlefield game and say, this is the one you've all been waiting for. Like right. they've been doing for the past, I don't know, six Battlefield games now. Mm-hmm. Like Battlefield 
like Battlefield 4 launched, the multiplayer didn't work. Uh, Battlefield 1, it was fine. Um, Battlefield 5, everybody hated. Uh, in between that, you had Star Wars Battlefront, which is multiplayer only and was kind of boring after a while. You had Mirajet's Catalyst, which only I liked. Um, <laughs> you had Battlefront 2, which was complete garbage. Uh, now you have Battlefield 2042, which is also very bad. So I was so stoked for Mirror's Edge Catalyst, and I did not like it. I know. Again, only I like that game, and that's so fine. I will t- I will take the hit on that. Destroyer Gundam in the chat says, I could see another Mirror's Edge being made, maybe. Uh, well, they just confirmed they're not working on it. But yeah. also, you have that. You have Ghost Runner, which I don't like, and uh, <laughs> Neon White, which I do like. Neon White isn't so much like, it's not like, it's close. It's close. Yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of good reviews for Neon White. I might have to check that game it's out. It's really good. You would like it. Yeah. Okay. I will check that game out. Um. So, yeah. I mean, DICE was created. I mean, DICE wasn't created to make Battlefield, but they made a name for themselves creating Battlefield. Mm-hmm. And they made a lot of good Battlefield games. But now, ever since EA said, you need to make Battlefield compete with Call of Duty, they've just been like, struggling ever since to compete with call of duty it's bad that used to be the big thing it used to be yeah they, they, i mean it used to be call of duty versus medal of honor and yeah. then uh medal of honor just fell off and then it was call of duty versus battlefield uh mm-hmm. and then uh nobody cared about battlefield they just stopped making battlefields for like a little bit yeah they they the ea really messed up yeah Anyway, uh, Overwatch 2 will replace the original, making it unplayable in October. <laughs> Great news, everyone. Yeah. Uh, if you had a sneaking suspicion that Blizzard's currently in beta hero shooter Battlefield 2 would affect the 2016 original game in some way, you were correct. It turns out that when the upcoming sequel drops on October 4th, it will straight up replace Overwatch, rendering the now seven-year-old game unplayable now what was that about folks from both games being able to play with each other remind me because my memory sucked um this was for ama uh folks from the overwatch 2 development team held on june 22nd it's full of answers on the game's early play period and what's in store once it launches in october and director aaron keller was also in attendance and field, one of which asks what exactly the early access well you gotta stop um, more specifically your, your your audio is doing like a max headroom right now you're like jumping all over the place is it really yeah uh, uh leave and come back i'll read this uh okay uh, the news comes from our uh, Reddit AMA folks from the Overwatch 2 development team held on June 22nd it's full of answers on the game's early access period and what's in store once it launches this October. Game director Aaron Keller was also in attendance and fielded some questions, one of which was asked what exactly early access meant. More specifically, the Redditor wondered whether Overwatch 2 would replace Overwatch's PvP or shut the game down entirely. They said, quote, we're using the term early access to indicate this is just the start of many new things coming to the game, Keller said. We're launching with new heroes, maps, and features, but there are even more of these coming seasonally every nine weeks. We recently released a roadmap detailing some of this content with a new hero coming in seasons one and two and a new map in season two. Additionally, larger pieces of the game that have always been a part of the vision for Overwatch 2 will be released to the game as part of the live service, including the launch of the PvE campaign next year. When Overwatch 2 launches on October 4th, it will be a replacement for the current live service. That is so complicated. (laughs) <laughs> it so really is i saw when people were playing overwatch 2 the beta you have your like like uh your 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 battle net like app yeah you go to overwatch and then there's a drop down menu for which type of game you want to play and you can toggle the overwatch 2 beta yeah it's it's a drop down menu within the Overwatch one thing. Uh, that's how closely related this Overwatch two is to the original Overwatch. So uh, yeah. now they're saying you just straight up won't be able to play Overwatch one, which is a huge problem. 
because you had to buy Overwatch 1. Yes. So if I bought Overwatch 1, you're just taking it away from me. <laughs> yeah, the game you bought is effectively useless. However, uh, this does mean are- that the structure of Overwatch, including stuff like the 6v6 setup, will officially get retired in favor of Overwatch's two new 5v5 matches. At least all your progress will carry over to the new game. That's nice. Uh, I have uh, a suspicion it also says that the- this isn't really going to be the case, though. I have a suspicion that uh, there will be a toggle where you can play the original Overwatch. Well, it says um, that this contradicts what uh, former game director Jeff Kaplan said about the two games uh, being a shared multiplayer environment when Overwatch 2 launches in November. Mm-hmm. When Overwatch 2 was announced in November of last year, sorry. Yeah, what is so, shared multiplayer environment? It went from mean? being like I guess uh, you can compete uh, between two games, like Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like, they have terrible features. Well, I guess it's like there would be modes and stuff where you can play, like, you can play against people who have Overwatch 1 or stuff carries over from Overwatch 1. But Uh, but now it just sounds like you have to get Overwatch 2. Because the characters do different things. Like you just don't have right. flashbangs as as uh what the hell's his name? It's not McCree. McCormick? What the no. fuck's his name? <laughs> uh Miss Click said Miss Miss Click about. Overwatch uh professional here says it's a free upgrade. Overwatch one won't be playable, but it'll transfer you over. Yeah, but you had to pay for Overwatch one though. I gave them sixty dollars for Overwatch One. Now I just don't yeah. have Overwatch 1. And Overwatch 2 is a free game. Yeah. So I don't have to pay for Overwatch 2. You don't have to pay yeah. for it. But you do have to pay for the PvE, I think. Yeah. It's not... This isn't an intuitive so, uh, system they have here. Not an intuitive system. It's very confusing. It's very... Uh, it's needlessly confusing. Uh, it sounds like they took a simple concept and are trying to make it as complicated as possible. And I wouldn't be surprised if they ultimately made Overwatch 1 obsolete and unplayable because they want you... It's not. This isn't just an Activision Blizzard thing. It's a, it's a problem in the industry at large. They want you to move on to the next one. They, mm-hmm. don't, they want you to leave behind the last one and go and buy the new shiny one. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm not against them making a sequel. Like Like... Like I'm waiting for a Destiny three before I start jumping into Destiny again because I'm over Destiny two. Right. Although I was all on board with the original Destiny being a, 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 a service that they just kept going forever with, but then they screwed it with the Destiny two. Um, yeah. So I'm. I think adding a, a sequel brings people back in, you know, and 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 this was this was an opportunity to bring me back into wanting to play an overwatch again uh i don't know Mm -hmm. if they had to call it overwatch 2 though they could have just called it overwatch something else and then just have all of these little changes and make it seem like a sequel you know they didn't have to slap the two on the end there right because that implies a lot more that they didn't do you know right and 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 well, the fact that they're getting rid of the original Overwatch <laughs> makes it even weirder that they called it an Overwatch too. If they called it like yeah. Overwatch Infinite or something, I'd feel less weird about them completely getting rid of Overwatch One. Yeah. But again, I don't think I'm not even uh, sold on them getting rid of Overwatch One. I think it'll just be a toggle that no one will use. I, yeah, or if, I don't know. I I honestly could see them just replacing Overwatch One with Overwatch Two. In some capacity, because well, I mean that that sounds I like mean, an Activision uh, uh, being evil thing. Yeah, there's precedent for. That. I'm pretty sure the uh, War Warcraft Three remake eliminated the original Warcraft Three <laughs> from like digital storefronts, like straight up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I can I can totally see them doing that. Uh, let's talk about John Cena for some reason. Yes, let's talk about John Cena and thank him. For giving us Metroid Dread. <laughs> <laughs> WWE uh, superstar turned actor John Cena apparently told Nintendo how much he wanted a new 2D Metroid game years before Dread was released. 
According to a tweet from Dan Reichart, uh, creative director at Giant Bomb and former WWE employee, back in 2017, John Cena took part in a Nintendo Switch photo shoot and repeatedly told the Nintendo rep how much he wanted a new 2D Metroid game. <laughs> Years later, when Metroid Dread was released, uh, Nintendo kindly sent the now actor a copy of the game, to which his team replied, John loves it. Uh, <laughs> during this photo shoot in 2017, uh, Cena repeatedly told the Nintendo reps how much he wanted a new 2D Metroid when Metroid Dread came out. Oh, I just read that. Oh, that's Reichert's uh, tweet. tweet. Never mind. Uh, now, we're not saying that the former rapper inspired Nintendo to make Metroid Dread, <laughs> but the timings the uh, do add up. All joking aside, former Nintendo employee uh, Krista Yang, who was present at Cena's Nintendo photo shoot, also joined the conversation, adding he did say how much of a Metroid fan he was. He's a really nice guy. Uh, since Cena is known more for his work in Hollywood than in the wrestling ring these days, here's hoping we can, uh, we end up seeing him in the fan requested Metroid movie that as far as we know, isn't in development. Yeah. I hope he plays, uh, Metroid himself. Uh, yes. <laughs> how, which games do you think he played? Which 2d Metroids do you think he played that made him want another 2d Metroid? He didn't play all of them. <laughs> no, uh, I'm guessing either the Game Boy Advance ones or Super Metroid. You don't think NES just straight up? Yeah, I don't know. Because like NES Metroid is so different from like good Metroid that like I don't see how if you just played Metroid 1, I don't think you would have the same reverence for it as you would if you played Super Metroid or Metroid Fusion or Zero Mission. I, I, I think you would if you were a kid when f the first Metroid came out. Right. Because at the time, you had nothing else to compare it to, and it was probably freaking mind-blowing. Uh, he's 45, born in 1977, so he was probably... Uh, he, what was he, a teenager when... when uh, No. Yes? No. He was... Uh, he would be... He would have been 10 when... Uh, Metroid One came out, so I was eighty-seven. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I think the original would be enough, and then maybe he played Super Metroid because he liked the the first one so much, and then uh, I guess, and then that was enough for him to be like, "Hey, give me another two D Metroid." Yeah. And then he probably played four seconds of it, and it was like, "This is awesome." I'm yeah. Again. <laughs> this is. Tell them so. I love it. <laughs> Anyway, so thank thank you, John Cena. Thank you, for John giving Cena. the world Metroid Dread. I'm so happy for your existence. Yes. Uh, that is all the news that we have. Yes. So but that means have... it's time for. Oh yeah, baby. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. It's tweet of the week time. You dumb idiots. Yeah. <laughs> it's from Elite Sonic fan. What did you do this weekend? <laughs> Nothing. Did you get to relax at least? Somehow, no. This this speaks to me on such an incredible level. You have no idea. <laughs> it's uh, Sonic and Tails talking to each other. Yeah. That's it. That's the tweet. It's... I feel I that. Mean, I feel it. Right? Isn't that the way? Isn't that the way it That's always is? That's the way it is. Uh, we got to thank Rock and Val for gifting a sub and for subscribing for 24 months. Thank you, Rock and Val. I also saw Thanks. Rock and Val this weekend. Uh, all right. Now we'll talk to you people real quick. Yes. Starting, of course, with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. YouTube.com slash Wolf Den yeah. Sorry, I was shaking you around. You got dizzy. Yeah. Uh, Mako Fox says, this whole open zone thing. Oh, well, we have some answers for you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> this whole open zone thing seems to remind me of how Bowser's Fury played. They just had the level elements plopped in there and Mario would move around the open world with interconnected levels. At least that's what I made from the explanation and the footage shown any anywho Please keep up the great work. Thank you, Mako Fox. Thank you. We see, will that, keep up the great work because you said please. See, that's a good explanation, but that's not what Sonic Frontiers looks like. You know, it looks yeah. way 
more barren and like there's way more space between the the stuff like mario yeah. bowser's fury had it was was pretty dense like it wasn't that big but it was dense with stuff yes you know and 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 sonic frontier it looks like the stuff is kind of spread out mm-hmm uh, anyway, Keyholes says, saying the cookie is the worst part of an Oreo is like saying the crust is the worst part of the pizza. They're all delicious, so really, what does it matter? You need to stop right now. If you think the <sighs> crust is delicious, I don't I don't know. Here's what okay, here's the thing about pizza crust. And I don't understand I like I don't really understand why people don't eat the pizza crust. Because the pizza crust is essentially the same thing as the bottom of the pizza. It yeah, just doesn't the, have the cheese or sauce on it. Yeah, the thing that makes it a pizza. <laughs> it's missing the the good stuff. <laughs> it's objectively shittier than the rest of the pizza. What about However, the stuffed crust pizza? Okay, then then that's then that's a good crust. There you go. So, so so I will say I used to not eat the crust. I used to just say fuck it, this is lesser. I deserve yeah, this better. is just the handle. <laughs> Until I heard somebody say, if you don't eat the crust, you uh, are being insincere to the other people who are also eating the pizza because you're uh, not you could you you could be filling up on the on the crust. You know, you're eating more pe- of the good parts of the pizza and leaving the scraps while everybody else is eating the crust. And I was like, that doesn't that's make a, any sense. <laughs> you're being insincere to the other people because you could be filling up on the crust. You're leaving food behind, you know? Okay. So I was like, you know, that's a good point. I'm going to start eating the crust. And now I eat the crust. And that's my story oh, of how man. I became a better man. <laughs> <laughs> it's character development you learn over time, how yeah. to, how to, you know? <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, D. Linton says to me, open world means that everything is seamlessly connected. That's probably not the case here. That's what I was, that's what we spent the whole podcast talking about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it looks like every, uh, it's just a big hub world because you can go and you can complete other missions, uh, in other locations ripped from Sonic's history because that's all Sega team knows how to do now. Yes. Uh, well, honestly, that's all we want. Uh, <laughs> William Pendergraft says, I don't think Frontiers will be open world in Breath of the Wild style. I think the open zone is their attempt to disguise having a large hub world like Banjo-Kazooie with large linking levels like Banjo-Tooie. Just wish Sonic Team would stick to 2D Sonic. Uh, Well, yeah, not far off there because it looks like that's what it's going to be. A big hub world with like things games. to do in it, and then you know levels that are in addition to the hub world. Yeah, I, I don't know what the significance of the hub world is going to be, but yeah, I it's, mean, it seems like they, the, the levels will be the big deal. I don't know. It well, I don't know because they're definitely hyping up the hub world. So mm-hmm. I, I, am, it makes me believe that like you're going to be spending a lot of time in the hub world. And that there's going to be things to do in the hub world beyond going to the next level. I think um, that they thought that the hub world was going to be really cool to see. And it <laughs> wasn't. And they were like, oh, fuck. Oh, we what have to we show doing? the rest of the game now. Yeah. Uh, Robert know. Taylor says, imagine after the apocalypse, the only lasting remnant of human life ever existing is just episodes of the Wolf Den podcast. The aliens would be like, what the fuck are these two talking about? They'd be like, wow, people must really be interested in how to shave their balls using code <laughs> With Wolf Den for 20% off and free shipping. And then they'd be like, so did they ever figure out what open zone meant? <laughs> Does open zone have something to do with a ball shaving? <laughs> now we're in the chat, right. guys. Make it make it good. Uh did we say do we get George McFarlane's uh Nope. 15 months. Wow, we 15 months, and I'm watching this tomorrow. 
Uh, but I wanted to say hi. Hi. Hello, George McFarlane. And okay, Clay, with uh, two months. Thank you. Uh, Metascension, I'm trying to find a good fight stick that's under $100 and works on Switch, PC, and PS5. Does such a thing exist, or am I looking for unicorns? Uh, such a thing does kind of... It's a, the PS5 is the problem. Mm-hmm. PS5 is weird. Uh, you, under $100 is going to be hard. But if you could get one with, I think, a Brook contr- uh, a control board, I think it works on everything. You can make one with a Brook control board. Oh, again, the PS5 is the hard part. You can get an adapter for existing ones. Like you can get the 8 do one. That works for PC Switch. And then you can maybe get a PS5 adapter. Maybe one of the, uh, the Mayflash adapters for it. I think 8 do does make an adapter that you can use any controller on any system. One of their USB True. adapters. I had a hard so, time getting that to work with PS5, but they say that it does yeah. work. Uh, so so do that. Just use the 8-bit do with an adapter. I love the 8-bit do one, but I don't think there's a way to make it work with PS5. Try Look up the adapter. I'm pretty sure you can... Do, I mean, they say it works, but there's USB adapters that I think are way easier. The USB ones will just plug in. I'm pretty sure Mayflash has one. I mean, they have one for PS4. I don't know if it works for, for PS5. Uh, Will, I didn't tell you what I bought this weekend. What did you buy this weekend? I got a couple of Pikachu plushies. I got a DS <laughs> Lite that's metallic rose that's in like Ooh. phenomenal condition and came with the bottom that's plate nice. and everything. Yeah, Thrill House is sending me a rose, a metallic rose stylus because it didn't come with the with the with the right <laughs> stylus. Right, um, and I got a Game Boy Pocket that was in very good condition for also very cheap. Nice, um, but. The coolest thing I got, Will, mm-hmm. wasn't actually at the convention. Oh, no? The coolest thing I got were the friends I made along the way. <laughs> no. The coolest <laughs> thing that I got was uh, I was at the convention, and I was walking mm-hmm. around. You know, I, I don't know if I've told you this, but I've been on a journey to find right. an old CRT TV. I right. really like the old PVMs, like a Sony Trinitron, because they look right. sick. Yeah. Yeah, but all of these tube TVs are like 15 hertz, max 30 hertz. Right. And on screen, when you're filming them, they just look awful unless you match the shutter speed or whatever. So having right. them in the background of a shot sucks because you're going to get all this flicker. Yeah. So I've been on a journey to find a high refresh rate old TV that kind of looks like a PVM. Right. And that's just not possible. I would I talked a little bit to Shank Mods and mm-hmm. he said you need a, a a a computer monitor CRT, like an old one. Right. Uh and I was like do they have those that look like PVMs and he said no. Mm-hmm. Uh, well he he said that would be hard to find. And I've been on a journey to find something like that. I found something I didn't know ever existed. I was walking around uh, too many games, mm-hmm. and I saw these two little nine-inch TVs that were Sony PVM-looking guys. They were Sony's. Uh-huh. They were flat. They were LCDs, but okay. in the body of a PVM. Interesting. And E pulled out his camera, 24 frames per second, and no flicker at all. Wow. So I said, give me these right now, and he said they're both <laughs> sold. But oh. but uh, he would hook me up later. So okay. I, that night, went on eBay and mm-hmm. found some for cheaper, and I just bought them. So uh, <laughs> I found things that look like PVMs that right. won't have any flicker, but they're only nine inches, so they're kind of tiny. Okay. And I don't know why I bought two of them. I should have just bought one of them. <laughs> I think I bought two of them because I was ready to buy two right there at, yeah. the, at the show. And I just had it in my head, and I just bought two. Yeah. Also, because they can go in a rack, like a server rack. Oh, that's They make cool. a rack for it. It's freaking yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that's my story. I want to get a bigger one, nice. like a 14 or a 20-inch one. But uh, yeah. I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And then I told Shank Mods that I bought that, and he said, those things suck. They have really bad uh, 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 latency, and the colors uh-huh. are bad because they made them – uh, during the transition to LCD and HD. Right. 
uh, they made those monitors. So they're like the first LCD screens to ever exist. Yeah. Uh, so I said, I don't care. I'm not playing on them. They're just for background and shots. <laughs> anyway, there you go. That's oh, my story. That's cool. Sounds like you had a grand old time at too many games. They only really take SDI and S video. And I think it's S video. I'm not even 100% yeah. sure it's S video. <laughs> that makes sense. This is like professional grade. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, where are we at? Everybody's uh, making fun of the fact that I said nine inches. Grow up. You guys lived in the <laughs> same state. Just wondering, says Izzy Mexican. Uh, yes, uh, this state no, happens to be I, very big. I live on Long Island and Bob lives in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey Bob, what mic arm would you recommend to hold my mic? My budget is a hundred dollars. You got, you are a lucky woman. <laughs> the blue compass that I use is a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, I'm here. What did I miss? Nothing. Just the whole show. Nothing. Um, throw house says I'll buy the second one if you don't need it. I was going to get one from him. Uh, maybe I'm going to fuck around with them and see what I can do with them. And then if I don't need it, I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, uh, Mia Svan Art. Thank you for the three months. Hiya, Bob. Hello. Luke Anton keeps asking if Chris D'Elia is the, is the third wolf bro. Mm -hmm. And why have you hid this from us? Because isn't he problematic or something? Yeah, he was, um, <laughs> he was doing gross That's stuff why we with hit it. little girls. <laughs> That's why we hit it. Yeah. Uh, Bob, do a monthly eyelid review when it comes out? Absolutely not. I got to say, the chat was kind of shitting on the art style. I thought the art style looked fine. It was just different. Yeah, it's, it's, it is just very different from like previous Monkey Island games. Yeah. Uh, so. You getting anything from the eShop sale? No. Uh, this is a great sale, though. If you ever wanted to buy yeah, any, any of the big AAA stuff that never goes on sale, there's finally stuff on sale. I got to go back and look because, like, there was a lot of stuff, but it, I was I got kind of overwhelmed. <laughs> Mario Maker? Not like it. Mario Maker. You suck. You don't even I, have it? I barely have time to play games as it is. Why am I going to play a game that, like, never ends? <laughs> Holy hell. Uh, do you think we'll see a real direct soon? Uh, I don't know. I, I think that we're going to see some games get dropped soon, some AAA games. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're going to wrap them up into a direct. I think they might just drop the trailers like they did with uh, uh, Paper Mario. It was like two yeah. summers ago. They just like, here's Paper Mario. We're doing a Paper Mario. Uh I'm Tech trying to Net. remember. That, I know they did the the Xenoblade Chronicles Direct that we didn't care about. Right. Um, maybe they'll just do that. They'll just do random one offs for certain games. I think I think we're gonna get the random one offs, and we're just gonna get random drops of yeah. trailers. Tech Niner, thanks for the hundred bits. What's a good game on sale? Mar uh, Mario Maker. I said it already. Also, like freaking Zelda's on sale, and like Odyssey's yeah. on sale, like all these all the big AAA stuffs on sale. It's great. Yeah. I did get Mario Maker 2, and I really like it. For someone who sucks at Mario games, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> uh, it's 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 as hard as you want it to be. Ray Zeflin with the 44 months. Hi, Internet Dad and Internet Uncle. Thanks. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Wolf Den Bob, have you seen the Nintendo Treehouse plays li 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 live? A live? Nintendo Switch, it looks so amazing. The dialogue had me rolling on the floor with laughter. Also, Will, you were wrong about Super... You were wrong. Super Pac-Man is the second official Pac-Man, not counting Ms. Pac-Man slash Crazy Auto? Uh, Crazy Auto? Crazy Auto is a game. I know that. Or is that Evil Auto? Anyway. Uh... Oh. Well, okay, don't blame me because in the little box at the bottom of Wikipedia, it lists Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, and then Pac-Man Plus. Super Pac-Man is after Pac-Man Plus. Did it? So Super Pac-Man came out in 1982. Pac okay. According to Wikipedia, Pac-Man Plus came out in March of 82, and Super Pac-Man came out 
in September of 82. And Ms. Pac-Man came out in 1981. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Pac-Man, but, to my understanding, was like a mod of Pac-Man that just became yes. official all of a sudden. So like, it wasn't like really a sequel, but I think over time they made it a sequel. Ex- more or less, yes. It so, got retroactively uh, made a sequel. Yeah, because it was, it was a mod, and they sold the mod to Midway, who was the North American distributor of Pac-Man, not realizing that they should have went to Namco, who actually owns the rights to Pac-Man. Mm. Uh, this is why uh, Namco doesn't really do anything with this Pac-Man. This Pac-Man is actually owned by At Games. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, so I think Namco has been like slowly trying to replace. Ms. Pac-Man with another character, Pac-Mom, I believe is <laughs> who, they, who, who they're now calling here. I'm I'm serious. <laughs> so so at Games is the company that made the Sega Genesis, uh, like 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 the, the shitty uh Sega Genesis classics thing that you would see yeah. at like a Rite Aid or a Walgreens. Yes. Pac Master's wife. This is on the Pac-Man wiki. Pac Master's Pac wife. Master's wife. That can't be. Is the mother of Miss Pac Man. Is the mother of Miss Pac Man, Pac Baby, and the wife of Pac Master. Who's Pac Master? It looks like Daddy. It looks like Daddy Pac Man. Oh God, I don't like this at all. We're, we, I don't we like how. To- I don't like how this person's name is Pac Master's wife. <laughs> <laughs> like they don't have their own name. I know. We we've, we've got to we've got to move on to another question before we get too deep into the woods of Pac-Man lore. <laughs> There's only so much video game lore I can take. Oh, okay. Kayla says very important question. Did you like the Mario and Luigi cookies at Too Many Games because Thrill took them to you without me even being nearby? Yes, I did. I did like them. I took a picture of them and then forgot to tweet it. She made fucking beautiful Mario and Luigi and Pokemon cookies. Oh, yeah? They were awesome. I see you have your own Twitch name now. <laughs> uh, does Packmaster have slaves? Okay, and we're okay. done with the show today. Thank you guys for hanging out. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. No matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us. Because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Special thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring <laughs> this episode. I will say that Packmaster 1000% owned slaves at some point. <laughs> if you look at the this man, uh, some, something's up yeah. behind those eyes. All right. Anyway, thanks for being here, guys. We're going to throw you over to somebody right now. I don't know who. I don't know who's on. There's a lot of people on. I'm having anxiety about who to throw it to. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to stream on Thursday. I haven't streamed in a while because I've been busy. Leave me alone. I'm also going to have a whole ass video again for Thursday. (laughs) What a time to be Bob. Uh, I guess you can go watch Wood. He's had a big enough day as it is. He had 25,000 viewers today. But, uh, uh, why don't you go give him a couple hundred right now? (laughs) Uh, and I'll see you later. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Bye.